before we continue this podcast, Dudes Behind the Food is brought to you by Good Chop. What do you think, Mike Tyson? I love Good Chop. It's the best. I wake up every morning. I grill myself a steak. It's immaculate. It's amazing. I'm going to eat your children and have some Good Chop after. Wow. Thanks, Mike. That's that's amazing. Number one, easy access to high quality products. Good Chop offers convenient, contact free delivery right to your doorstep. All products are sourced from the USA. And Mike says he's not going to chew on ears anymore. Only Good Chop protein. I don't need ears. I just need myself a nice ribeye, maybe a nice thoroughloin. Let's do it. <laughs> hey, Mike, that's a weird laugh. <laughs> So go to goodchop.com slash dudes100 and use code dudes100 to get $100 off your first three boxes. Go to goodchop.com slash dudes100 and use code dudes100 to get $100 off your first three boxes. Man, you know, online shopping isn't slowing down anytime soon. Is your business ready to keep up the pace, Harry Potter? <laughs> Havada Kodaver, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's not, with ShipStation, you'll never worry about shipping again. Make the switch to a solution that handles all your shipping needs quickly, affordably, and painlessly. We actually do use ShipStation at goodybrand.com. We use it. It's super convenient and helpful. ShipStation is already trusted by over 100,000 e-commerce sellers, and it's lit because you keep track of orders from any sales channel, okay? Super easy to use. Make shipping the easy part of having an online store. You have bigger ideas to think about. No wonder 98% of companies that use ShipStation station for a year keep using it for as long as they're in business it's just that good so you can ship more in less time with ship station okay use my offer code dudes to get a 60 day free trial that's two months free of no hassle stress-free shipping just go to shipstation.com click on the microphone at the top of the page and type in dudes ship station make ship happen hey hey, hey uh fellas have you started spring cleaning yet um, uh, Kim Jong-un, have you started spring cleaning yet? <laughs> I never clean up anything because I'm a number one shaver of all time. Well, damn. Well, look, the carpet needs cleaning, right? And the drapes need dusting and your lawnmower needs mowing. Spring has sprung and the global leaders in below-the-waist grooming have the best tools for cleaning aisle five in your pants. Time to clear out your winter bush and join the other four million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code Dudes, now let me tell you, they got all types of things for y'all. They got the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer to get the most precise shave on your hedges. Did we mention it's waterproof as well? Did we mention that, Kermit the Frog? Uh, yeah, sure, Miss Piggy. I, I, I guess you like to keep me nice and clean and fresh, huh? Wow, perfect. All right, so just for y'all, we got 20% off plus free shipping with the code DUDES at Manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code DUDES at Manscaped.com. It's time to throw out your old hygiene habits and upgrade your life, okay? DUDES, behind the foods. Yo, it's the DUDES, behind the foods. Hey, hey, David So. Yes. What do you call an elephant mixed with a rhino? We're going to move on from this right now. <laughs> Elephino? Thank you to the writers for that one. Bang! All right, guys. Well, welcome back to Dudes. That wraps up this episode <laughs> of Dudes Behind the Foods. Welcome back to Dudes Behind the Foods. I'm Tim Chantaroxy. And I am David So. Welcome back to your favorite food podcast here at Studio 71 Studios. We got a brand new table. And let me tell you something, the sound here is quite fantastic there, Jane. Uh, how's the weather over there? <laughs> it's all just, a, a, we're just doing a Seinfeld impression. I know. Just, what's the deal with coffee tables? <laughs> uh, hey man, when was the last time you went to Las Vegas? I was there with uh, Bart and Geo, man. But I haven't been to Vegas in a long time where I wilded the fuck out. Mm. And those were the fucking days. You just don't know where you're at. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're waking up with a clitoris in your mouth. You know, it's funny that you say that because <laughs> there was a time when I was in Vegas. <laughs> and you know, when you end up at like a strip club in Vegas and um, you're there, 
you and you go outside. I don't know if you've ever done this, but you 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 just kind of lose track of time in the strip club and you leave and it's fucking the sun's out. <laughs> you know, Tim, I've never been to a strip club. <laughs> oh yeah, same, 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 same. Only whorehouses for David. So <laughs> skip the middle mall. The, skip the 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 the, the uh, skip, just, skip the skip the skip the uh, skip skip skibbity skip skibbity oh. skip. <laughs> just give him the pussy, man. Uh, <laughs> um, I remember one time I was at a strip club in Vegas. And I was so sleepy. I was drunk, sleepy, but I was getting a lap dance. Um, and this stripper was also, it was like she was working the late shift. And when I tell you, the fucking security guard tapped us both, woke us up. Hey, wake up. She was asleep. <laughs> Give me a lap dance. And I was asleep. That's in the hella lap dance funny, chair. dude. Get the fuck out and of we here. We were both like, huh? Oh, shit. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> she's like you don't owe me anything that was a good nap <laughs> yeah for real right she's like, you're so comfortable <laughs> um but i ask that question to say what are the best places to eat in las vegas someone hey. just asked me this on instagram let's just say i will i mean that's so hard to say because if you have never been to vegas right and on top of that, if you haven't been to Vegas and you have a job, because mm. Vegas is two different experiences depending on what stage of life you're in. Right. Right? Because you have the broke stage of your life where you're over here expecting the girl to pay for everything. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's handing out all of it. And that's the difference. Because now you're going to the dollar steakhouses, you're going to like yes. the quick bites and stuff, and you're getting, you're getting, you're pre parting drunk before you go out. Well, let's do it. All sides of the spectrum, dog. Yeah. Let's fucking go. And then there's the bougie side where it doesn't even fucking matter. Now, yes. you're having the top. So Vegas is very interesting because you only get to open up a restaurant on the strip if you are a proven success. Mm. There's no way that you open up there and then um, you don't really have a background in food. So you're having some of the best restaurants that you've seen in other parts of the world come to Vegas and they open up their second or third location there. Because mm -hmm. so, it's like, oh shit, they got one in Vegas? Mm -hmm. So for example, there was a spot, and this is before like these like artisanal, I wouldn't say artisanal, but like these hardcore street tacos, aside from the Dollar Street tacos, was this place called, uh, the, 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 the place in uh, San Diego on off 8th Street. 8th Street. It's uh, Tacos El Gordo. Oh, yes. Yeah, so they opened one up in Vegas. Oh, interesting. So now you don't have to go all the way to San Diego. If you're in Vegas, you can get Tacos El Gordo. Right. Uh, the steakhouse that we like. The one uh, with the fucking burger, dude. Old Homestead. Okay. Get your pens and papers out, guys. Our favorite burger, and we've mentioned this a handful of times, probably we might have even talked about it on this podcast, but I wanted to... A girl specifically was like, hey, man, what's the best place to eat in Vegas? I was like, we talk about it. Let's talk about it. Um... At the Caesars Palace, there's a steakhouse called Old Homestead. There's also one in New York. So that to your yes. point, um, and Old Homestead, not only do they have fire steaks, but they got this motherfucking burger. Oh my god! It eats like a steak. You bite into it, and you're like, "This tastes like a juicy, succulent steak with their duck fat fries." Oh boy crazy like i still think about that burger till this day same i whenever people ask me what's the best burger you've ever had i'm like you guys you gotta go to the old homestead and get the oh burger they got all types of, i don't even remember what types of cheese was dripping off it that was aged cheddar caramelized onions mm -hmm. i think it, it was a toasted pretzel bun i'm not quite sure mm -hmm. uh and then there was like a mix of their own meat which was like dry aged like prime sh brisket or some shit mm. like that fucking d Delicious, dude. Mm. That burger is one of those things. Like you might feel if you're at a steakhouse that you wouldn't get a burger. It's like why get a burger when you can get a nice juicy steak? Yeah. But this shit eats like a steak, and it's just an experience. I it's, fucking love it. It's worth going with some people. Order you a steak and a burger, and fucking split that shit up, and everybody get a bite because that motherfucker is great. You know, speaking of eating, like I don't know why this just popped up in my head, and I actually forgot to mention this years ago. So years ago, before I did this movie called Gook. Mm -hmm. uh, Justin and I were messing around with this idea, and I always like making fun of people. That's like my shit, right? <laughs> and so I wanted to do a series where I literally was making fun of everybody who does anything for fucking views. <laughs> and they, you know, they fake all this reality TV show shit. So at this time when people were vlogging, people were faking everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just for the views. Mm. But in my mind, I was like, oh, if you could fake stuff, I could fake it better. Mm. So I did this, it was two episodes where me and Justin. 
we actually got into an argument mm. and we were f- legit fighting in there. Right? Okay. And it was about him telling me to be an actor and I didn't want to be one. And we start fighting in the restaurant and this people in the restaurant don't know this. This was the bit. This was the bit. Ah, okay. And then it was during this, this was me. I was vlogging at this time and it just looked like a regular vlog. Yeah. And so everybody's like, how dare you disrespect Justin? <laughs> you know, he's somebody who's older than you. He's a seasoned actor. You need to learn how to take advice. You don't need to be a fucking know it all. And I forgot that we didn't continue the series. Mm. So everybody thought that this was real for fucking years until really? I got a comment and they're like, this guy, David, dude, he thinks he knows everything. And I was like, oh, I didn't tell people this was fake. Oh, wow. <laughs> I completely fucking forgot. And so a couple years back, and I could have just let it go. And I just wrote to him. I was like, this is fucking fake, you stupid <laughs> idiot. You can't fucking tell because my acting is amazing. <laughs> but the next step to that video, it was literally us in a restaurant. And he was, he yelled in the re- at me at the restaurant. Yeah. He fucking slammed the table. Oh, God. And everybody in the restaurant was like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. And I just forgot to tell people it was fake because the next episode was him um, coming to my car while I'm recording in there, he throws a brick into my fucking window. Oh God! And I, we just never recorded it. And instead, we did the movie. Well, damn. Yeah. Well, Crazy. there you go. Clarified it right here on Dudes Behind the Foods. I actually had a fake fight with AJ Raphael that people thought were real. Really? <laughs> people thought it was real. We it was like a vlog where I'm like we're yelling at each other, and it was literally just for the vlog. I forgot why we even did it. But people thought it was, people were in the comments like, was that real? Oh my God, do you guys have beef? Oh my God. Uh... AJ would get his ass beat. (laughs) Hey, you keep AJ's name out of your fucking (laughs) mouth. Well, everybody, uh, Tim just slapped me. (laughs) Uh, Tim just uh, slapped me. Keep AJ Raphael's name out of your fucking (laughs) mouth. So, uh, Red Roses 3? (laughs) <laughs> by the way uh my favorite moment in oscar history oh. it is my favorite moment this is i haven't watched the oscars in years right and i didn't watch this one either yeah and i will tell you this sad happy and ca- cackling laughing i didn't like it i loved it <laughs> I loved there's there's so much to unpack about that moment because it's so I feel 50-50 about everything. Yeah. Usually I have like I'm leaning more towards one side. I'm kind of 50-50, dude. Yeah. Because they're rela- so I mean if just to backtrack this, right? So if people didn't know, I had no idea Jada Pinkett Smith had alopecia. Same here. I thought she was just sexy bald. Same here. Cuz I have masturbated furiously to that woman multiple times okay to the point where i've passed out so <laughs> in, in, much <laughs> half the reason why i wake up just fucking <laughs> just dizzy in my bathroom <laughs> is because of jada pinkett smith ah <laughs> uh, yeah i uh i also didn't know about the alopecia until you know the shit happened and what's funny is i watch the oscars every year mm. and this is the one year i didn't watch because we were putting veda to sleep mm. and i randomly checked my twitter and was like and i saw a tweet that I thought was a joke. And then until I realized this person wasn't a parody account, they were live tweeting the Oscars. And I was like, what the fuck? No way. No way. And then I watched it and I was, I was like, what the fuck? How? It's Will Smith. It's Will Smith, man. He's the composed guy that talks about love being fair and staying composed. That's not Will Smith's character from what we know of yeah, him, right? Bro. But when I look back at this, right? So. The reason why I'm, I'm a little conflicted about this, and I really do feel, and you know, having to sit on this, and I didn't say this on my podcast because I sat on it even more, mm. I honestly feel that that moment right there wasn't aimed at Chris Rock. It felt more like frustration about oh. everything going on that stems from Jada. 100%. Because the conversations about him being like, I don't know, what's the word, like emasculated or something, mm. or not a man, mm-hmm. started from that all, August Alsina shit, mm-hmm. you know, and the Red Table Talk stuff. And then it stems back to the Tupac shit. Mm-hmm. That sh- it's like, it's all this other shit, and it finally caught up to him more, because before, um, I mean, aside from the, the Aunt Viv stuff, right, mm-hmm. he's been able to kind of keep a cleaner rap sheet than everybody else. Right, right. But then, you know, with the Red Table Talk stuff about the August Alsina stuff and talking about entanglement, Mm -hmm. you know, it kind of, you know, people started making jokes at his expense, which I don't think he's used to. Right. Because Wilson has always been like the coolest dude, the coolest dude like ever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I think so Chia has been listening to his book. And, you know, from what I've heard about the book is like Will Smith has has discussed uh, a lot about how. He feels kind of like uh, he's felt like a coward, you know what I'm saying, oh. in a lot of situations for 
um, when his like mom was abused, he didn't like do something about it or he didn't stick up for Jada or, you know, whatever occasions. But a lot of times in his life, he's felt like a coward. Right. So I feel like in that moment, of course, where you see at first Chris Rock makes the joke and Will kind of Will's laughing at first. Right. Which threw me off. Right. I think we all I mean, after the slap, we saw that we we're all thrown off. Yeah. And then but like, of course, you're at the Oscars. So Chris Rock makes a joke about you. You laugh, but I think he realized he saw, and he saw looks, Jada's face. Saw Jada's face, <laughs> and then I think the moment set in where he's like, "Not only is she pissed, but also cameras saw me laughing and saw her not laughing. This is going to be what if this turns into another one of those moments where I didn't have my wife's back? You know what I'm saying? Mm. And he's like, "I got to do something about this." Yeah, I wish he wouldn't have fucking slapped Chris Rock though yeah. it was like it was so man it was I still I literally woke up the next day and I was like did I dream that shit it doesn't seem real right it didn't seem real it still doesn't seem real yeah I can't believe it the weird thing about that too is when he slapped him the, the, and once again I'm saying this in not being in his position yeah right cause it's hard to say I'm just gonna say it hypothetically as in the best case scenario. Okay. Because Chris Rock and Will have worked together. They're friends. They yeah. know each other. Right, right. Right. Which is why if you look at Chris Rock's uh, body language, when Will is walking up towards him aggressively and clearly he's not smiling, Chris Rock's hands are behind his back because there's trust there. He wasn't expecting to get slapped. He was not expecting to get slapped and he wasn't even expecting aggression. He thought right. it was gonna be a funny moment. Yeah. So what happens with that, at that point, I'm pretty sure like Chris Rock his, I would have been more okay with the joke. Well, number one, I didn't think it was that funny. Number two, it's that this is the Oscars. It's not a stand-up comedy club. Okay. Right? So I think like if in the realm of it being comedy, because there's a lot, a lot of comics saying like, it's just a joke. It's just a joke. Yeah, yeah, Cool. Yeah. I understand that too. But we're also the same people as comics that say, you reap what you sow. What you say, you can still get checked for it. You take the risk as a comedian of what happens after. Yeah. I don't condone the violence part. I don't think he should have put his hands on it. If anything, if they were personal friends, going back to what I was saying, is that- in the in in the best case scenario, he should have either slapped him off camera right. or talked to him off camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. He could have because at that point, what he did there, he didn't actually make Jada feel more comforted. Didn't make. I don't think so. In Unless she's crazy and we don't know about it. Yeah, and then she's like, "Yeah, you should have done that." Yeah. But I'm pretty sure it would have the same effect if he took him to the side and said, "Hey, I don't like that type of shit." I think the most G shit. I was thinking about this in the car. The most G shit he could have done, right? If he wanted to really make a moment. Standing up for his wife on stage, fucking live at the Oscars. Ugh, I don't know why he did that. He, he could have went up to Chris Rock, <laughs> grabbed him by the shoulders, mm -hmm. whispered in his ear. Yes, you need to apologize right now. I'm gonna fuck you up. Yeah. And then if we would have just seen Chris Rock's eyes get big and be mm -hmm. like, Jada, I'm so sorry. Yeah. And then Will Smith just <laughs> walks off. It would have been like, Yo, Will Smith just fucking punk Chris Rock mm -hmm. without the violence. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But and and you know, it's just it's so disappointing, and it sucks. And I understand like everybody goes through things. Everybody has issues we don't know about, right? Everybody um, is dealing with demons that we don't know about. Um, it just sucks that, especially for Will Smith, that. On a night where he won his first Oscar ever. It's tainted by this. Tainted by that. And his reputation will forever be tainted. You know what I'm saying? And for him, like, it sucks because now he has to apologize to his peers because that moment took away from everybody else's shine. I know. Sam, I think Samuel L. Jackson got his first Oscar too. Last night? Yeah, I think so. For what? For being Samuel L. Motherfucking Jackson. Best yeah. cussing in the world. <laughs> yeah. I got these snakes on a motherfucking plane. <laughs> it was for Django. But <laughs> for being the most hated black man in the history. <laughs> but he, um, I think Samuel L. Jackson also got an Oscar. And people forget too that they were pre presenting an award for the documentary for Quest Love. Mm -hmm. it, was for, it was to Quest Love and people don't even remember that. Yeah. So when he did that action, he took away from his peer shine. Mm -hmm. And that's something that he's going to have to live with now because at that Oscar, I didn't even realize that they were actually presenting an award. That's how much he took away from everybody else's shit. Yeah, man. So for him doing that, yeah, you may have stood up for your wife, but you also disrespected your peers. Yeah, bro. Um, you know, uh, it was definitely it. It really, you know, and you know me, man. Will Smith is like, you know, he's the reason why probably my fucking career exists. Mm -hmm. To be honest, you know what I'm saying? Because I modeled my whole entertainment career after Will Smith, and like, I looked at Will Smith 
as like a big brother almost because I didn't have anybody teach me how to be cool, how to like talk to girls like the Fresh Prince did. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So that from that moment for me where I'm like, ah oh, man, come on, Will, like why would you do that? It was such a mm. shock, you know? Um, and then, but, if, you know, then you got to remind yourself, okay, yes, yes, everybody has problems that we don't know about, but at the same time, it's like... There's still a line of acceptable and unacceptable behavior. Yeah, it almost feels like, you know, and then with his speech afterwards being like, hey, you know, like, I I like did this movie and it's about protecting my family. It's almost like, RK, bro, but yes, at the end of the day, Chris Rock did not deserve to get slapped. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The, the the reaction for what was said, what didn't match up. Right, right. You know, I honestly feel too that because of the role that he did and it's about protecting his family, I'm pretty sure like that character starts seeping into your everyday. Right. Because the way he slapped him was 20th century old fashioned <laughs> for my family slap. Right, right. Challenge you to a duel. Yeah, I was like, when he, the form of his slap, I'm like, that was regal. <laughs> that was a little uh, fancy, dude. He had his hand up, hither, thither. <laughs> and he slapped. Everybody hates Chris. <sighs> That's literally what happened there. Yeah. Oh, and can I say this, guys? Um, So I tweeted a joke that went a little viral. Um, And uh, did you see my tweet? The Fresh Prince one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hilarious. So thank you. Um, I, I, I tweeted, and this was like 20, 20 30 minutes after the shit happened. And I, I got the tweet in my head. I was like, oh, yes. So I sent it off. I was like, oh, yeah, that was a hard slap. Chris Rock's face probably was left with some fresh prints, right? Now, mind you, I know that if you write puns, that's not a difficult pun to come up with. Yeah. So I just want to clarify because a lot of people who came up with that same shit and tweeted it or put it in TikToks after me are like, People are like, yo, Tim, this person stole your joke. And I just want to say, hey, guys, I don't think anyone stole my joke. Uh, I think people think of the same joke a lot. And I just want to let you guys know that it's okay if someone had the same joke as me because it's not a super difficult I mean, joke to come up with. <laughs> now, too, there's so much content. It's hard yeah. to say where what came from what, yeah. right? Like the other day, too, I, I did like – because you know I do like a pretty decent Trump impression. Mm-hmm. And then somebody was like, oh, you stole this from a stand-up. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> How is me doing a Trump impression stealing from somebody else? Yeah. Like Trump is a real person. Right. He exists. Yeah. <laughs> the fuck are you talking about? Exactly. You know, and it was just pure nonsense. And I, and I literally went back to this person. I was like, you saying me stealing this bit from another comic is like me saying that Russell Peters stole from Chinese people when he did a Chinese accent. That's so silly. It's it's pure fucking nonsense. And that's why that's why I wanted to say what I said because I think that a lot of kids think that way and they don't realize, hey man, sometimes people do the same shit. Like, I'm sure the line Fresh Prince and Fresh Prince has been used by a million rappers too. Mm-hmm. It's just like, it's just something, you know, that creative people and not stupid like you kids uh, do. All right? Infidels. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break while you think about how dumb you are. <laughs> David, so do you like meat in your mouth? Every night. I agree. And I'm down to give you some good meat in your mouth, buddy boy. With Good Chop, you get a flexible monthly subscription plan for a high-quality American meat and seafood, okay? Number one, you get easy access to high-quality products, okay? Good Chop offers convenient, contact-free delivery right to your doorstop. Order fully customizable boxes. I'm talking about beef, chicken, seafood, and pork products you like the most. For example, you can order a well-marbled Angus Choice and Prime Cuts or get delicious 100% grass-fed steaks, whatever you prefer. And it's only the good stuff. Good Chop especially prides itself on sourcing beef that comes with no antibiotics or added hormones ever. No artificial ingredients, only the good stuff. I F with Good Chop so hard, I just grilled up a delicious ribeye the other night. Little butter, little salt and pepper. Had Chia had some, and she was like, Tim, you've never given me beef that I liked before in my entire life until tonight. And I said, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> and, and just for y'all, I got a special treat, okay? Go to goodchop.com slash dudes100 and use code dudes100 to get $100 off your first three boxes. One more time, that's go to goodchop.com slash dudes100 and use codes dudes100 to get $100 off your first three boxes. Good Chop, America's <clears throat> online butcher. 
Hello, my friends. Have you ever had issues with shipping things? Shipping things can be really, really annoying. Just ask my friend, Arnold Schwarzenegger. It is so very annoying. I tried to ship a chopper and the chopper was too big for the shipping. <laughs> well, Arnold, you're an idiot because that thing is huge. But guess what? If you're not a weirdo like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you can go ahead and use ShipStation. With ShipStation, you'll never worry about shipping again. Make the switch to a solution that handles all your shipping needs quickly, affordably, and painlessly. ShipStation is already trusted by over 100,000 e-commerce sellers. Keep track of orders from any sales channel, easily find the best shipping carrier with deeply discounted rates, and so much more. You can save time by funneling all your orders into one simple interface, no matter what you're selling. Manage every order, Amazon, eBay, Etsy, or your own website from anywhere, even your phone. Save money, save your sanity, and be so much happier. Ship more in less time with ShipStation. Use my code, offer code, Dudes, to get a 60-day free trial that's two months free of no hassle, stress-free shipping, just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and type in Dudes. ShipStation. Make ship happen. Huh. All right. Well, um, speaking of uh, old school memories... Um, I brought these just because they're tasty. <laughs> um, I don't know about this. No, I ordered these from a Mexican restaurant. Uh, originally, I ordered these for me and Shia, but then we didn't drink it, and I thought, oh, I'll just bring it for me and David. Oh. Um, we need to build a wall <laughs> immediately because it's gonna be huge. He always does this shit. Huge pussy. Yeah. P- Grab him by the pussy. <laughs> uh, uh, classic. Coke in a bottle. Coke, wow, that's a lot of Coke. Wow, that's a lot of Coke. It's uh, nice and sugary. Well, see, that's what I did. I, I said, wow. I was like, wow, that's a lot. Of... But he says uh, all the time. And they're like, oh, Shane Gillis did that joke. And I'm like, cool, but Trump says that. Are people dumb? Yeah, like, what are you talking about? You know about? what it is, dog? These fucking kids don't know anything. <laughs> they only know what's right in front of their face. Mm. So it makes sense that a kid... <laughs> Oh, I thought it was a twist off. <laughs> you should have told me. I thought you could tell by looking at it. Uh, you, you hole. <laughs> where's, the, where's the goddamn hole? <laughs> I saw that happen in my, in my peripherals and uh, I died. Um... These kids only see what the most current shit is in front of them, and they don't fa- they fail to realize that maybe this has happened before. Yes, like every comedian that does a Den- uh, Denzel impression now is doing the same impression, and which is just an impression of someone else's impression. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Everyone does the all right, okay, oh, oh, okay, yeah. okay, all right. You shot me in the ass. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like they all do the same shit. Cheers. I haven't had. A Coke like this? This is the one you put with the pinky up. Mm. Oh, man. Mi corazón. Different. So even to go back to that that Denzel Washington impression, right? Mm-hmm. So if I ask people right now, who did you first see that from? A lot of people be like, King Batch. Right. Batch bit that off of so many other comics, right? And not to say it's a problem, because he did it in a sketch where he's playing Denzel. Yeah. It makes sense. Everybody just does that. Yeah. And they're like, oh, Aries Spears did it wrong i know a comic who did it before Mm Aries spears did that shit they're like oh iman hudson he did it no 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 no. there's a guy named reggie reg Mm. if if you look this up on youtube right now reggie reg he is the best denzel impressionist you will ever see Mm -hmm. and he was the first one who did the pelican bay thing Mm -hmm. and so he did this bit where it was like um mr sam's uh what's his name uh, fucking uh, Shaw- Shawshank Redemption. Ah, ah, ah oh, you talking about um, Morgan Freeman? Yeah, yeah. So he does a Morgan Freeman, Chris Rock, and Denzel impression, and they're running a a, a chicken shop together or oh, a barbecue shit. shop together, and mm-hmm. he and he does the best Denzel impression. So at that point, when you see Aries Spears do it or whatever, guess what? I know somebody who did it way before all of them, mm-hmm. and he does it 
better than them too. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it doesn't take away from their funny because they do it in their own way. Right, right, right. And you know, Aries Spears also does a great Arnold Schwarzenegger impression, and mm-hmm. he gives credit to Will Sasso. Will Sasso was the one that he learned it from. Mm. So it's it's just a little bit of nonsense. Like we talked about this too on sitcoms, where there's so many people who do. Uh, like these jokes that you see in current sitcoms. Mm-hmm. But guess what? I saw that exact same joke from Seinfeld. Oh, from 100%. Everybody Loves Raymond, the Cosby show. I love Lucy. I love Lucy even further back. Yeah, bro. And like, oh, dog. I mean, shit that I had to realize is, um, you know, like one of my favorite Jamie Foxx stand-up specials, he has a whole bit that was like basically pretty much based off of an old Richard Pryor bit. Mm. And I didn't realize it until I seen the Pryor bit. And I was like, oh shit, this is like, they ba- they kind of saying the exact same shit right yeah. now, you know? I had this one bit where I used to, and this is not even a bit because this is something literally my dad said to me, right? And Bobby Lee had this bit where he was talking about how his dad, when he said he was going into comedy, he was like, oh, so y- you know, you're gonna be a clown. Mm. Right, I did, had the exact same bit mm. because my dad literally said that to me. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't something that I saw of Bobby Lee doing stand up. It was a quote from my dad. Yeah, and this other comic came up to you. It's like, don't steal Bobby Lee's bits. I'm like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. He was like, you you saying that your dad called you a clown? I was like, yeah, I'm fucking Korean guy. <laughs> like, that's what my dad literally said to me. Yeah, because I I told him that I wanted to. Be, it was a it was a bit based off the fact that when I told my dad I wanted to be uh, a teacher, he goes, oh, so you want to be poor? <laughs> and that's what he literally said to me. And I told mm-hmm. him I'm gonna be a comic, and he goes, oh, so you good at crown? Oh, <laughs> well, you see what you want to be. And Bobby had a similar bit, mm-hmm. but I just dropped that bit at the time because he was more known for it. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean I stole from him. Yeah, it's just we're both Korean and we had the same upbringing. Isn't it funny when someone will come up to you or they'll leave a comment and they'll be like, oh, dude. Huh, you stole that joke from George McEnroe. Yeah. And I'll be like, I I have no idea who this fucking person <laughs> is, guy. I've yeah. never I've never seen your George McEnroe in my entire life. I literally just said something that was funny, yeah. dog. And they think, you know, and that's what the thing is, is like these dumbass kids, they fail to realize that, bruh. Sometimes people come up with the same shit yeah. because funny shit is funny shit sometimes. Oh, you know? this guy over stealing from Peter Wickerwitz. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a Peter Wickerwitz thing to say. <laughs> Who the fuck is Peter Wickerwitz? Uh, literally, literally, the other day. No, no, literally. Um, with the uh Fresh Prince joke, I tweeted it and some. And when majority of people were saying, "Yo, Tim, this guy stole your joke," one kid. Because Bose was like, replied, and she's like, Tim, I want you to write all my tweets for me from now on. And some some kid replied to both of us and was like, um, Tim got this joke from another guy, LOL, but, you know, he said it differently. I'm like... Who's the other guy? I'm like, little boy, I have... I've never stolen a joke in my life. So get the fuck out of my face! <laughs> yeah. I didn't say that, but... I was like, dude, like, are you dumb? The re- weird thing is, is like, the reason why that stuff irritates me is because I don't care to steal from anybody's jokes, yeah. right? Because I want everything to be my own. Mm-hmm. And if it sounds similar, then yeah, I get it. I've, I've even taken away jokes because it sounds similar to other people's stuff. Mm-hmm. But if you're looking at another Korean comic who we know each other and we have very similar upbringings, yeah, things are going to coincide, mm-hmm. right? And the reason why people laugh at a lot of these jokes is because they are relatable. They've mm-hmm. gone through those similar situations. So mm-hmm. why is it not possible that I made something similar? If the delivery is completely different and the setup is different, how the fuck is it the same? It's not. There's stuff like where Amy Schumer, clearly it's a bit for bit steal. Mm. Like the way it's presented, the way it's said. Yeah. That's kind of hard, right? But even then, I'm like, okay, I could kind of see some of this stuff is exaggerated. Yeah, I was trying to give her, you know, when everyone was calling her a joke stealer, uh, the benefit of the doubt as well. It's too much. Until they showed like a a frame, like a back to back of these like sketches from her sketch show. But at the same time, you know. There's a team of writers on these sketch shows, so I feel like you got to blame one of the writers for that. For you know real, um, and and that's what I think is fucked up too. What a lot of people don't realize with stand ups, it's like you know sometimes they got other people writing their jokes. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you got to blame the joke writer, you know. Mm-hmm. But I guess that's kind of the price you pay if you got someone writing your jokes, you know. Yeah, it's kind of hard to copyright check your your jokes. Yeah, it's not like I'm over here like Jason Chen. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Jason, you fucking <laughs> joke thief. <laughs> Did Jason Chen steal joke? Oh, oh, the TikToks. <laughs> Those TikToks are literally a TikTok I've seen somebody else do. And this one tries to pass it off as his own idea. It's like, bro, I saw this like already. You fucking piece of shit. My favorite thing that I've that I always say is like, Jason, by the way, Jason is my friend, so I could make fun of him. I was like, not only does this guy uh, covers other people's music, he covers people's jokes. <laughs> 
fucking piece of shit. Shout out to Jason Chin. Yeah, you little fucking fuck. <laughs> um, okay, other spots to eat in Vegas. Ooh, what's the? Have you been to that one steakhouse that does only like dry aged beef? No. Nah. It's it's the it's the New York New York place. It's in there. Oh really? Uh, it's I think it's called Alexander Steakhouse. I think or something like that. But I, I can't remember it. But all their shit is like like 45 day dry aged mm. beef and dry aged beef if you've never had it it's different so mm. what's essentially happening during the dry aging process is that the outside will grow a fungus or a mold mm -hmm. and the, the meat is actually decaying and so those en enzymes break down the meat and they add like this flavor and quality to it mm. so before you served it uh, they'll cut off the exterior mold and the and the dry crust oh. and inside you'll see that a lot of the moisture has disappeared and you see more of the fat in it i see so that so fresh meat versus dry aged beef has a very different texture and taste. Well, damn it. Now you got me questioning if I've ever tried dry aged beef and now I really want to do it. Dude, 45 day age, it, it has a little, little, little funk to I it. I don't like if a you little say. funk to it. I mean, I eat the pussy and ass. So okay. So I like a little funk. It's just you know? right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just, uh, why not? You know what we should do? We should go to Vegas and make you ride that stratosphere ride at the tippy, tippy top. <laughs> Tip though. No, there's I refuse. two of them up there. I I did the you know the biggest <laughs> Ferris wheel in the world. Yeah, I I did that. Where at? In Vegas, the biggest Ferris wheel. Oh oh, that one. Yes the one yes. Where, but and you're enclosed in like a room. Yeah yeah. <laughs> I wanted to die. It is. It is too high. But they'll bring you a little champagne. And... I don't care. <laughs> we did that zip lining thing. <laughs> one of the worst experiences of my life. <laughs> And they just hang you. I might even I might even send Robin Couch a little clip to put in for this episode. <laughs> How do I tighten this? <laughs> Thank you. All right, man, you got this. You ready? Let's do this. Woo! Oh God! Ah, oh, you son! Oh God! <laughs> so Dave is not even putting on. For the camera right now, this is real. Oh, I opened my eyes. Everybody that I've done wrong, I meant it. I fucking hate you. Oh, you stupid sons of bitches. I'm going to throw up. Oh, I fucking hate you. Mariel, I love you so much. Do I record it? Oh, sh no! Oh my. <laughs> David's moving way faster than me because he's like fatter. Oh, oh, oh. That was one of the worst experiences of my life. I, I had a good time. Everybody, everybody just loves it. <laughs> you sick fucks. They're just like, oh, it's so funny. These, his jokes are so funny. I don't remember the things I'm saying. <laughs> I have to scream it out because I'm just dying. But I mean, you, you you did it and you took it like a G. Good job, David. So I almost fell out of a ride in Legoland. <laughs> Favorite buffet in Vegas? Bacchanal. Bacchanal. So I didn't know about Bacchanal until we filmed that episode of Send Foods. The prime rib? Oh, the prime rib. Was amazing. Everything was bomb. The stone crab. They got all types of fucking... Shellfish and cockles that I've never cockled before. Uh, you want some cockles? <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> their their stuff is, it's not just like, oh, it's just there. Everything is good. Yeah, Bacchanal Buffet, but that one, that motherfucker is, you know, one of the pricier buffets, and it's going to be like a line to get in there. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't feel like paying that much and waiting in line, a uh, Wicked Spoon Buffet at the Cosmopolitan is fire as well. Rio has a bomb seafood buffet. Oh, what do they have? Um, it's just like everything is like super fresh and there's like a huge spread of seafood. Um, That's my shit. And for not like, and it's not super expensive. Um, I just remember going to Rio with my family and just going in on everything. Let me ask you something. Yeah. If you had to give up beef, pork, or seafood, which uh, you could only have one. Which You've one? asked me this before. Have you? Have I? I think have so. Have we? On this podcast? I don't know. B Beef, pork, seafood. Which one do you? Which are the two you give up? I know, and and I and this is why I know your answer. Your answer is you would give up the land animals, and you're picking seafood. Yes. <sighs> you know, man. I really love steak. I also really love seafood. So when you say seafood, I get access to all the little all the little creepy crawlies. You also can't have your mom's sauce. Why not? 
because there's fish sauce in there. Oh my god! Oh, you're getting you're going all the way. With <laughs> yeah, we go all the way. Well, if you put it that way, then I'll have to have seafood. God damn it! Okay, well we'll take out the sauce then. Those, <laughs> those sauces don't count, but just protein. I just really, oh man, I I love a good burger, and I love a, whenever people ask me like, what's your like your last meal? It's always fucking. I always say steak, like a a bomb ass steak, and my mom's beef kapow. So, oh that, shit, that would leave me to 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 pick beef, but I fucking love seafood. Like I crave seafood. You can no longer have sushi. Man, like sushi, no crab legs, no like, uh, no shrimp in any of its forms. Fuck, and I okay. So if it's two things I crave, it's probably like steak and sushi. So this is a struggle. This is a big decision for me right now. You know what? But my heart is saying beef. Wow. Wow. <laughs> really? <sighs> no bacon. Oh no, it's definitely beef over pork. I mean, mm. I love pork too. Pork belly, bacon, that's my shit too. But man, yeah, it, it's tough. It's neck and neck for me between seafood and steak. But I think at the end of the day, I think I'm going beef. I would definitely miss like a nice, just juicy fucking steak, just char grilled over like coals and fire. Yeah, but you also told me you grew up not really liking steak. So until I had a good piece of steak. Yeah, and like my mom's been cooking fire steak for me since I was a little bitty See, that's boy. the hard part, man. Because <laughs> no matter what I grill over, you know, fire if it's seafood, seafood's very delicate yeah. comparatively yeah, yeah, to yeah. steak. Like steak has this thing where it's just so soul satisfying, mm-hmm. right? As Robin Couch is a fucking vegan, she's hearing this. <laughs> I was literally like, just thinking that. Robin's like, <laughs> Robin Couch right now is like, these fucking savages. So our sound lady is a vegan or a vegetarian. Vegan or vegetarian? Uh, vegan, but I try not to be annoying about it, so like I don't mind. Yeah, we know. Uh, hey, girl, you you picked the wrong podcast, the sound engineer on. I know. <laughs> I love biting into a steak and having the blood and the hemoglobin drip out of my mouth. David, please. Now that's not cool. Keep Robin Couch's food preferences out of your fucking mouth. <laughs> now you have to slap me. <laughs> oh, I will, brother. <laughs> Well, well. <laughs> yeah, Chris Rock is it? Let me get just one pack of ice. <laughs> I sure am sore. Let me just get one real. <laughs> oh, guys. All right, we'll let you go watch that clip of Will Smith smacking Chris Rock, and we'll be right back. David So, let me tell you, when you're on the hunt for new wine, you have two options, right? You can wander around your local grocery store like an idiot, picking up bottles at random, or you can get personalized wines you'll love delivered right to your door and for a fraction of the cost. If you love the excitement of discovering new wines but hate the risk of disappointment, First Leaf Wine Club is a no-brainer, okay? First Leaf, if you didn't know, is a wine club that curates and ships wines that are personalized to your tastes, allowing you to discover wines from five continents and 12 countries. But here's a fun little not so secret about First Leaf, dog. They work directly with winemakers, which means you get incredible wine 60% off retail. I mean, come on. Wow. First Leaf is so confident you'll love the wine. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. And if you receive a bottle that isn't exactly what you were hoping for, First Leaf will credit your account. Now, wow. I love First Leaf because I'm not good with my wine selections. I don't know. I look at the aisles and I just get nervous and I start crying in a little corner in the liquor store. And they say, sir, sir, no Asians allowed in here. Oh, wow. And I say, this, I... Sorry about it. <laughs> so if you love finding and tasting new wine, First Leaf is a no-brainer. Join today and you'll get six bottles of wine for $29.95 and free shipping. Just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash dudes. That's six bottles of wine for $29.95 and free shipping at tryfirstleaf.com slash dudes. Hello, my friends. This podcast is brought to you by Fast Leaf. I don't think they're French. When you're on the hunt for new wine, you have two options. You can wander around like an idiot around your local grocery store or wine mart picking bottles at random, or you can get personalized wines you'll love delivered right to your door. Because guess what? If you're like me, I want to try new things, but I don't know where to start, especially when it comes to vino, my friends. It's complicated. I don't know exactly what I want, but I do know the taste that I like. Well, guess what? First, 
Leaf is a wine club that curates and ships wines that are personalized to your taste, allowing you to discover wines from five continents and 12 countries. When you rate the wine you receive, First Leaf learns more about your palate. So not only are you being introduced to a ton of new wine, each First Leaf box gets better. That is why I love them so much. I get to try new things, and not only that, I'm not shooting in the dark, baby. That shit's lit up. I know what wines I'm getting, and I'm like, mon ami, bonjour, je ne sais quoi, et tu pom pom pom. I fucking love it. If you love finding and tasting new wine, First Leaf is a no-brainer. Join today, and you'll get six bottles of wine for $29.95 and free shipping. Just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash dudes. Oh, just go to, that's right, just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash dudes. That's six bottles of wine for $29.95 and free shipping at tryfirstleaf.com slash dudes. Do you think that Will Smith slapped him because it's, it's acceptable because it's Chris Rock? Because if it was like, let's say somebody else, right? Let's say if it was, my friend said like David Spade, Mm. do you think it would be as acceptable then? Or is it okay because it's like a black dude on a black dude? I think it's multiple reasons Mm. that people kind of were able to not feel as upset about it. A hundred percent. If Will Smith smacked, especially a small white dude like David Spade, it would have been way more of a thing Mm -hmm. because- uh, David Spade is tiny. David Spade is a tiny white man. Mm-hmm. David Spade is a tiny older white man. So I think it definitely would have been more of an issue, right? Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, so yes, I think that the, the the fact that he smacked Chris Rock, uh, that it was him smacking another black dude and not a white dude, I think people, you know, I think at least white people were uh, more forgiving of it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely, I think, yes, it would have been more of a bigger deal if he slapped. No, I don't know. No, that depends, right? Because if he slapped a, a, let's say he smacked fucking uh, sexy ass Jason Momoa. Yeah. I don't think people would have thrown a, had a big deal about it. Yeah. Because Jason Momoa was fucking, you know, a, a man's man. Yeah. You know? I feel like Jason Momoa would have got slapped and his face wouldn't move. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It would just be popping and he'd be like, that's cute, sit down. Right. <laughs> or he would have been like, would have been like, all right, brother, look, you and me need to have a conversation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or he would just start dolphin calling because he's Aquaman. <laughs> <laughs> see like a dolphin come out so yeah there's there's a lot of factors a mm. lot of factors that play into it um yeah but uh sucks for chris rock man <laughs> yeah especially because will is so huge he's like six three six four these gigantic hands that shit hurt like a motherfuck dude hey chris rock took that shit like a g and we didn't talk about this yet shout out to chris rock for not only taking the slap like a g but being able to pull it together and not say and not make it more of an issue or say shit back or talk any shit afterwards because you could tell that moment where he was about to say something he was like "Mm, ah yeah he was kind of like hey man he got jokes yeah he was like but i'm gonna bite my tongue because i think even chris rock in the moment was able to realize that there's more than just just G.I. Jane joke. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That caused a fucking A-list actor like Will Smith to get up on live television. And slap the shit out of me. At the most prestigious night in Hollywood and smack him in, all, in his whole face. Yeah. Wow. Because people are talking about the comparison to Ricky Gervais, right? They're like, well, how come Ricky <laughs> Gervais can do it, but Chris Rock can't? Mm-hmm. The difference between that and from what I've seen from the Ricky Gervais thing was he was making fun of the industry. And this is like stupid shit in the industry that people agree with. Yeah. Right? Where it's this idea of self-importance. Like you want to talk about socio-political issues when you have no fucking right to say any of this yeah. just take your fucking award for acting stop being a stuck up little bitch and get the fuck off the stage which everybody can agree with and it you know and Ricky Gervais you know he's making fun of pedophiles he's making fun of like that type of shit like there was nothing in Ricky Gervais's controversial um like little speech that attacked anybody that I felt like um wasn't a part of it. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're a part of the joke. Where it feels like Jada Pinkett was just, he, she got astray just because she was with Will Smith. Yeah. But when Ricky Gervais is like, yeah, you know, what did he say? Something about like, 
ah man like he was it was a joke about Leonardo DiCaprio and he's like the something something is only 17 years old so it's it's barely old enough to be Leonardo DiCaprio's date or some shit like that you know it was like you could see Leo's face you saw him laugh because it's like okay this is I'm here for an award like I could get made fun of, but when I feel like you're just a guest, and you know what I'm saying, and have and you, <laughs> and you know Chris Rock because he had made fun of Jada Pinkett in the past at the Oscars yeah. too. You heard that joke? No. So, oh it, no, it was the year. So this is also probably why Jada Pinkett was a, more like, irritated as well. Yes. So the year Jada Pink, the year that people first started protesting that the Oscars were so white, Jada Pinkett was boycotting the Oscars. Oh, that's right. And so Chris Rock was like. <laughs> Jada Pinkett, like, you know, who cares about Jada Pinkett boycotting the Oscars? So he's you like, weren't invited? Yeah, he's like, that's like me boycotting Rihanna's panties. Yeah. I wasn't invited to him, so who cares? Yeah. <laughs> so I, she was probably like, oh, God, he's talking about me again. Which, that joke is funny. That joke is funny because it's relevant, and, you know, and she was a part of that shit in, yeah. because of what she was doing, right? In this case, even though I do feel like, yeah, um... Like it's different if he knew about the alopecia. Like I said, I, I don't. Be- I believe that he did not know. I feel like he's just kind of being like, it's a random ass joke, blah blah blah. But it was, was kind of, it was like a whatever joke, and mm-hmm. I just think like, you know, it was pointless. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but either way, he shouldn't have got slapped. God yeah. damn it, Will. That was that's that's gonna be the tarnish on his thing for a while. I mean, people they're not gonna forget about it, but it's not gonna be as big of a deal as people think, especially yeah. because of the way they both handle it. They both apologize. Yeah. They kind of squashed it after. The really cool thing is you see um after that happened, you kind of see Tyler Perry and Denzel Washington talking to both of them, mm. kind of calming the situation down and having a one on one talk about what's going on. I was like, that's pretty fucking dope. Oh, that wasn't Denzel. That was that was King Batch doing his impression of Denzel. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was just so good that yeah. you you couldn't tell. Okay, all right, all right. It was all just right. You saw the two bags doing this, yeah. and you thought it was Denzel. <laughs> and it was Shaq doing an impression of Tyler Perry. <laughs> That's what it was, dude. How did I not know this shit, dude? <laughs> but it's cool to see, like, you know, these two people who are very prominent figures, especially yeah. in, like, the black entertainment thing, kind of not egging things on, but actually checking in on their peers. Yeah. Which is really fucking dope. Because, like like we said, there's, there's something really very off about him doing that and it's just I feel like it's like you said um, him just getting punked and as being talked about being a cuck and shit like that mm-hmm. and also too like his role of King Richard where he talked about you know about protecting your family got into his fucking head you know I think it, it, it was so the, the, the fact that it was so off character is what makes people sympathize because yes violence especially like random violence like that it's like you want to be like there's no excuse for that right but then for someone like will smith to up and do that in such on in such a way is like yo is he okay Mm -hmm. like is he like what's going on there Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so you almost automatically want to put aside the slap because chris rock was fine and be like yo will what's going on man Mm -hmm. like are you gonna be all right you know Mm -hmm. because you hate to see somebody like that go through something um, that we don't know about that could lead to other shit, especially when you think of like Robin Williams, you know what I'm saying, where everyone thinks he's like so happy comedian and then he ends up killing himself. And it's like, yo, what's going on behind the scenes that we don't know about? When he said, keep my keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth, mm-hmm. you know what it reminded me of? Mm-hmm. It reminded me of the fight that he had when his dad left him on Fresh Prince, his face. Oh. It looked that sincere. Mm-hmm. Like he looked hurt. Right. You know, and it made me feel bad for him because mm-hmm. he was like, keep my wife's name. It didn't look like he wanted to fight. It was more like he was uh, sad. Yeah. It was like, I had 14 <laughs> birthdays without him. Yeah. Damn, with him. <laughs> <laughs> That's the face that he made. Mm-hmm. And I felt sad. I and was then like, when, when he was giving his speech, it was, how come he don't want me? Man? <laughs> how come the Academy Awards don't want me? Man? If he said that shit. I would have been like, best speech ever, dude. I would have been like, okay, Will, I forgive you. <laughs> Everybody forgive this man. To hell with him! He never even sent me a damn car to hell with him! That's probably one of the best television scenes ever, dude. Yeah. And I think when you watch the Fresh Prince reunion, he talked about how um, uh, Uncle Phil, mm. some, what's his real name? Avery? No. James Avery. James Avery, yes. How could I fucking the disrespect? <laughs> James a- Avery when he was crying he was hugging him 
he was telling him he did a good job in the scene. I was like, dude, that shit. And then you know, you see Will starting to tear up and shit. You know who actually defended Will? Hmm. OG on Aunt Viv. Really? On Instagram. Really? Was like, hey, he goes, she goes, I met Chris Rock once. And, I, and that's the last time I ever need to meet him again. He's an asshole. Oh my and she God. was like, sometimes you need to stand up for yourself. And she backed up Will wow. for slapping the shit out of him. Crazy. That is wild. And they have beef. They had beef. They had beef. Mm. I really do want to know the conversation that they had uh, that was really cut short in that doc. Mm-hmm. In that in that you know reunion thing because it was... Will Smith didn't really have a response for the stuff that she was asking him. Yeah, because, you know? I mean, you know, you could tell he felt like a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. You could tell, like, he was like, what can I say to this? Because he's <laughs> like, yes, I I ruined this woman's career. Yeah, she goes, why did you do that? She goes, as hard as it was for being, number one, a dark-skinned black woman in this industry, mm-hmm. you telling people in public that I was difficult was literally the the destruction of my whole career. Mm-hmm. Like, especially with the stigma that comes to being a black woman and mm-hmm. how they feel about women of like dark skin color. And you know, he felt, he's like, I have nothing to say. Like, yeah. I was young, I was stupid. And you know, those repercussions, it's like, Jesus, dude. He literally ruined her career. <laughs> I know. And listen, no disrespect to new on Viv, OG on Viv though, she did something special. Oh yeah, new on Viv was just kind of like, mm, you know, kind of like a placeholder. Yeah. yeah. Um, And before people leave this in the comments, uh, whenever we talk about uh, or whenever anyone talks about the Fresh Prince dad scene, there's always someone who's like, and Tim, did you know that Will actually improvised that scene because he didn't grow up with his father and that scene was actually not in the script, you guys. That's a rumor. It's a not true rumor. And it's a fucking dumbass rumor. <laughs> That's the rumor? That is a rumor, dog. A lot of people believe that that shit was improvised. I'm like, you guys... No. <laughs> <laughs> I, did you not see the reunion? It was not improvised. <laughs> it was not improvised because, first of all, when you film a TV show, you need to know what's what's going on and shit. You know what I'm saying? And also, like, um, Will said, like, his dad was around. <laughs> so, yeah. And also, like, you know, you think he was going to improvise a scene and then all of a sudden, like, and then all of a sudden, you know, because they, they had to know when the angles was to pull out the fucking statue and put it on the thing. You guys, you guys, that's a great rumor. It's not true. So if the reason why I know that's not true for a fact is because when you, I don't know if any of you want to be an actor out there and you start taking acting classes, one of the biggest differences between single cam and multicam um, writing is that in single cam, there is a lot of moments for improvisation, right? They actually like it, um, typically. So for those of you who don't know, a single cam sitcom would be like The Office. Yes. Okay, where um, there's usually not an audience, and um, it's kind of like, you know, it's almost like um, there's just like this a single camera on the actor when they're talking, right? Multicam are like, you know, you'll have a, when you see, like, I have a live audience a lot of times, and it's like a whole, uh, like a, a set where it's like multi cameras come. There's like the wide one, and then there's like there's the close ups. Singles and close ups. Yes, yes. So yeah. that's the difference. Continue. Yeah. So multi cam people, what what they always tell you too is that when, you, especially when you do auditions for multi cams, you don't improvise shit. Mm-hmm. You say the lines exactly how it's written because writers are god on multi cams. Mm. Like they, they'll literally have you do a scene, and then you'll have to rework that scene, and they'll write shit on the spot. So. For him to improvise that whole section, most likely that wouldn't happen because the writers are su- are super key in sitcoms. Yes. For beats. Yeah. Yes, for beats and for like, you know, and for like the camera cutaways and shit like that. And like every episode is 22 minutes long. They know exactly yeah. what they're doing. Not to say that there is an improv in there, but they're a lot more strict. Yeah. You know. Like there, there totally could have been a way to do multiple takes where Will Smith was just riffing and giving like a really passionate speech, but trust me, Daddy, that shit was not improvised. Yeah, you guys just love making things up, huh? Man, they think they're so cool and they have the cool facts. Like, guess what, guys? That was improvised. That's actually like a human psychology thing, though. Where um, if you read this book, I, I can't, I don't remember the name right now, but one of the one of the interesting thing about like human psychosis, and you guys can Google this shit, is that you'll see this trend now where things become popular because of the traveling of information about things that people want to be in the know, mm. right? So something very simple to that, just to bring it back to food, is Yelp culture. Mm. People like being 
the person that knows about this spot that oh, you yeah. don't know about. And like they right. like to tell you about it. Oh, mm-hmm. y'all, you haven't been to blah, blah, blah. Exactly. <laughs> so he goes, this is a cute little mom and spot, a pop spot that a lot of people don't know, but I do. And it, and it gives them this sense of, that's why people have secret menus on their restaurant, mm-hmm. right? It's not because like they want to uh, create something dope for people all the time, which is true. It's to get that exclusivity hype up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, if you, it's like, dude, you went to In-N-Out, you didn't, you know you can get that shit animal style. Mm-hmm. You know that was like a huge reason why in and out popped was because of their secret menu mm. everybody was like oh what do you mean you can get like this thing without buns you could do it this way that secret menu thing was super important because even now if you want to get something animal style it's not on the menu that's right hey wh- <laughs> why did the hipster burn their tongue why because they ate their food before it was cool okay well, guys, that wraps up this episode of the... I'm about to slap him. <laughs> Keep those dad jokes out your fucking mouth. <laughs> God damn it. Thank you guys for watching another episode of Dudes Behind the Foods. I'm Tim John Drunk Soup. And I'll play myself. <laughs> Make sure you like and share and subscribe. Rate it five stars wherever you're listening and watching your podcast um maybe leave in the comments what you want us to try eating on the next episode and i'll make david try it we'll see you all next summer (laughs) 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 behind the foods yo it's the dude